Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Bow and Arrow Tarot. Um, today we're going to get right into it. It's all about Aquarius and your love outlook for July, right? A couple days into July, but that's okay. We're going to get right into your reading and see what your month is going to be like. It's the outlook for my Aquarius this July. This is a general love outlook, right? So this could be, this could... Sh show that you are in a relationship it could show that you're starting a relationship but it's very much from your point of view right so we're looking at <clears throat> your love life for july from your point of view how you're looking at it the way you're approaching it the experiences you may that may come across to you and of course this is just one reading so it's not going to resonate with everyone just take what applies to you or you know if it resonates with you great if it doesn't resonate with you then leave it right here where it belongs on the table with me, all right? Somebody else might be able to pick it up. All right, guys, here we go. Straight out, the moon. Covered by the nine of cups, eight of swords, page of wands, king of swords, nine of swords. A lot of swords energy. Three of wands, hurry up and wait. Death, temperance. And two of swords. All right. Let's move this over just a little bit. And get some more space. All right. So, bottom of the deck, we have the hermit. All right. So, we have the hermit at the bottom. Talking about coming out of a period of isolation, perhaps. Solitude. Uh, living life of a hermit, right? Living life solitary on your own path. Um, could very well be that that is what you have been doing up until now, right? There's an energy of the hermit here, right? So when we look at the bottom card, we're talking about an energy that is kind of like, it's not the pervasive energy, but it's, it's an influencing factor throughout the month. It can be. So my lovely, lovely Aquarius, you got some, some, some stuff this month, huh? Some decisions you have to make. A lot of swords energy, a lot of air energy. Let's get right into it. The moon is at the center of your reading this month. So you are really in a period where you're not quite sure what's going on. Your feelings are really all over the place. Um, you might be feeling like you're having to go through like a testing phase, right? The moon is all about testing. It's all about feeling sort of like, uh, you know, like you're, be you're going through a dark period, right? Uh, you have everything you need to get through it, but you're just not sure, right? Because you're not given all the information. You're having to rely on a lot of your strengths, a lot of your skill, a lot of your intuition, right? Remember that the moon is the 18 in the tarot. The first eight is the strength card. So when we're at the first eight, when we're at that stage of our journey or uh, that's that one time stage of our journey of being at eight with the strength card, we're gathering our strength. When we are at the 18 in our journey, like with the moon here, that strength that we've gathered, all of that that we've sort of stored and, and sort of fortified within ourselves is tested. And this is why the moon oftentimes is associated with a period of testing. It's also associated with a period of just not knowing what's happening, not really having a handle on, on anything per se concrete, but that's all part of the test. It wouldn't be a test if you had all the answers. The one thing though with the moon is that really it is a period where you are learning more about yourself and, and generally coming out of the moon phase, uh, you come into the sun, which is the next card, 19 in the tarot is the sun, and this is where everything becomes clear, clarity is restored, vitality, and you realize that there was nothing to fear in the first place. And that's the journey, but this is where you're at, Aquarius. So things are very sort of, you know, very, very sort of uh, unknown right now, right? Very misty, very foggy, covered by a nine of cups. Now, you are happy. You are generally right now very, very happy. So although you have this moon energy going on, because right now you're, you've got a lot of emotions that you feel like, hmm, I'm not quite sure what's happening with this. For the most part, you're happy in your life. Because Nine of Cups talks about feeling blessed, being happy with your blessings, being happy with the lot you're given. Now... Conscious and unconscious. Well, your conscious energy, you do have an Eight of Swords. Now, this is interesting. Eight of Swords can be very sort of toxic. It can turn quite toxic. It is a feeling 
of being alienated by your thoughts, by the way you look at the world. It's a feeling of being alienated. I'm going to tell you something. It's very toxic because generally when people resonate with Eight of Swords energy, what's happened is that uh, they are so sort of small in their thinking. Their thinking is so restricted. Their ideas, the way they look at the world is so sort of binding and constrictive and restrictive that they themselves find themselves alienated from the bigger world around them. And this is a source of resentment and frustration. And oftentimes somebody who's resonating with Eight of Swords energy is also unwilling to sort of accept their responsibility. They kind of tend to blame everyone else, right? And it's a real need to wake up and realize how much of your own sort of small-minded thinking is really holding you back. Now, this is interesting. This is in a position for your conscious energy. And so uh, this could be somebody you're dealing with. Okay, you could be dealing with somebody who's gaslighting you a lot, uh, who's playing this role, because Eight of Swords is a real victim role. And it generally doesn't come up for somebody who sees themselves as an Eight of Swords, because the whole part of Eight of the whole, uh, the whole uh, basis of this energy is that it is narcissistic. It is that it, at its heart, it blames everyone else around. It doesn't see itself. You can see she's blindfolded and bound. Yes, she's blindfolded and bound as a result of her own actions and the way she carries herself, but nevertheless, she doesn't see that. Um, and so it's, it's rare for this card, if ever, to come up for somebody actually identifying with it. Generally, when it comes up, it can be someone that you're dealing with who's gaslighting you, who's really causing you to be in this kind of really weird dysfunctional space because of the way they're behaving. And so you're really busy with that this month. It could be one of the reasons why... You are having so much moon energy because this person you're dealing with is giving you a lot of sort of up and down emotions and you're not sure if you're coming or going. And that's what somebody who resonates Eight of Swords will do to you because of their toxicity and because of their codependence. But at the back of the, uh, in the back of your mind, at the bottom position, you have Page of Wands. And that's really like a desire to say, look, screw all this. I want to follow my heart. I, f I want to follow my vision. I want to follow my heart. I want to follow what I want to do. Page of Wands is this lovely kind of youthful fearlessness. Uh, of all the cards in the tarot, the Page of Wands is one of the highest cards for overcoming fear. Uh, the tiger of fear. The fear that holds us back from living our best life. Um, and, it is, and, it, and oftentimes you'll see, of course, pages are associated with youth, right? But with Page of Wands, you will oftentimes see a youth like a young, uh, a young man. Most of the time, there's no reason it shouldn't be a young woman also, but really a young person excited, right? Because young people have a fearlessness, right? They're ready to go to sort of dive into the world and make their sort of footprint on the world. And they don't have that fear that we begin to have as we get older. In any case, in the back of your mind, there is a feeling of wanting to sort of release. You could be connected. Some of you, uh, Aquarius, you may be involved in a codependent dysfunctional relationship. Um, where this is the month where you're kind of like, ugh. You know, enough is enough. What do I do? Right? What do I do? Because you're ready. In the back of your mind, you have this strong, strong, fiery energy with the Page of Wands. But you're busy with this dysfunction here, with this really kind of toxic energy. How do you come into the month? We're going to get a little deeper. I'll pull four more cards for clarifiers in a minute, but we're going to get the rest of your reading out. How do you come into the month? Well, you come into the month with a uh, King of King of Swords. Is that going to focus? Okay, King of Swords. Right, so King of Swords is very domineering. It can he can be very domineering, right? Uh, when he is in sort of uh, in a negative aspect or an extreme aspect of himself, right? He's the one. He's the rule maker, right? He's the one who can really kind of just like, look, it's my way or the highway. Generally, the King of Swords is someone who's very clear, very rational, very logical, all of those things, but he's very fiery about it, you know. Uh, he's also, you know, generally the one who's extremely honest. He requires brutal honesty from everyone around him. Having said that, though, considering that you are coming into the month with this energy, you have an eight of swords here. Also, I feel like this might be somebody in your life who is very domineering, uh, Aquarius. And they're the ones that you are coming into this month kind of thinking about, dealing with. They may be the ones who are causing this eight of swords energy for you. I'm feeling that. You come out of the month, by the end of the month, you're having a lot of anxiety 
Uh, it could be that you're dealing with somebody who now it's starting to come out that they are start that they are like this. They may not have been like this before, but it's starting to come out more, more, more. Right? Um, I really feel like this King of Swords is the person that you're dealing with who's very, very domineering, who's somebody that's kind of like. Uh, it's, 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 they have an impact, right? They have an impact. They have an impact on your love life. And I feel like they, you may not even own, you may not even be involved romantically with this person. This person may just be someone in your life who has a certain amount of power over you, may even be a relative or what have you, but there's some kind of connection here because I'm feeling that they could even be older than you, Aquarius, but I'm feeling like this doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic connection, but it is still a dysfunctional connection. They still have a hold on you. By the end of the month, you come out with Nine of Swords, which is a lot of anxiety and sleepless nights, because I think that this is the month where you begin to really challenge this a lot more. You begin to challenge this connection a lot more. You're busy with that moon energy. You're resonating with moon energy, which is a real feeling of, like I said, of being tested. You're really feeling like, okay, I'm being tested now. You want happiness. And Nine of Cups, that desire for happiness is really what's going to propel you for the most part. Now, what is your attitude this month? Well... You realize that you need some more information. So for some of you, I do feel like for some of you, this may even be a borderline sort of, I'm not going to say abusive, but a very, very dysfunctional relationship. And you're having to be very careful. Yes, you're having a lot of sleepless nights about it now, because I think now is when you're starting to consider leaving, right? You may not have had this anxiety before because you weren't looking at it that way, but this month things are all changing. However, you are having to wait. Three of Wands is patience, patience, patience. You know, it's waiting for the information to come in so you can make the right decision. It's difficult because you want to move forward. You want to get going. You don't want to wait, right? Uh, what it meets you. This is your attitude towards love. Like this uh, Three of Wands is this desire to really get all the information before you move forward, right? So although you don't want to wait, you are able. And this is what you feel is the most important this month. This is why it's making me feel like for some of you, you are in a very difficult situation with someone. Death is what meets you. So there's a loss coming your way. There is a loss of something. There is a death of something coming your way. I think you see on the horizon the end of this connection coming, but you're waiting. Temperance energy, this is interesting. More waiting, more sort of holding your ground. Temperance energy is in a position of, you know, your dreams, your fears, uh, you desires, uh, yes, you desire to be temperate, temperate, right? You're desiring and you are wanting this month to be able, you fear losing it because it's a position of your desires and what you fear. Uh, you don't want to be swayed from your position of power. Right now you are working from a position of power, which is what temperance is all about. It is maintaining your internal power, your strength, your composure in the face of, of outside influences that seek to sort of knock you off your square. Right? So you want to be, you're trying to maintain. I feel like this is for an Aquarius who's like slowly planning to leave a very toxic situation. Some of you, it's going to be extreme. Some of you it may not be that toxic, but you are planning and there is planning that is involved. By the end though, there's a decision you have to make. So by the end of the month, you have a two of swords. That's a decision. It feels like an impossible decision because two of swords is kind of the it is the card for impossible decisions right you're kind of like between a rock and a hard place the one thing with two of swords though is that balance is what's called for so right now what you need you know what is why by the end of this month rather this is the outcome this is where you're going to be finding yourself it couldn't be that you've worked towards something and now it is time for the final choice make your choice crossroads time going to be difficult for you to make that choice now what i was going to get at with the two of swords is that it is all about balance two of swords is moon and libra energy your sister sign aquarius so it is all about finding balance finding the right balance for you but yeah this this to me oh god you know aquarius i feel like some of you this is the month this is the month where you are tested in your resolve to make a situation go the way you want it to go, the way it is you want it to sort of work out for you. You're seeking happiness and freedom, um, but it's tricky. You, there may be some hermit. The hermit is there because some of you may be in a situation with somebody where you're very isolated. And it's what's making it difficult for you to sort of take the next steps also. Nevertheless, this month is a month where change is coming. Death is coming. Something is happening. There's a big, big sort of... 
change, you know, uh, a loss. Death is loss. Death is basically loss, the dying of something. But you have to have loss in order to make room for growth, right? So there's a loss that happens that comes in and answers sort of your plea this month. So it's going to be a little rough, but I think you get what you desire. Knight of Wands, Nine of Swords again. Damn. Ten of Swords, yeah, letting go, and Hanged Man. Okay, so you are definitely in the throes of letting go uh, of a situation that has been a long time sort of horror for you. A lot, a lot of Ten of Swords here. A lot, a lot of swords, and you're, you know, a lot of stabs to the ego, to the psyche that you've had to sort of pick yourself up and go again and sort of survive, right? See that Ten of Swords? You're at the end of it. This is a huge change for you, Aquarius. This is a reading for an Aquarius who's been in a very difficult relationship with somebody for a long time, a very domineering person. They've caused them a lot of injury, both psychically, emotionally, maybe even physically. And yet, this is the month where Aquarius has had enough. Enough is enough. Eight of Swords is covered by Nine of, nine of Wands. So you are all about sort of like going after what you desire. You just won't be stopped. And Knight of Wands is all about putting that energy into that sort of that passion into your goal, right? Not being slowed down, putting that enthusiasm into it, putting that passion into it. You may have someone in your life, Aquarius, most recently, who is giving you a bit more of a boost, a bit more of a confidence boost. They may be coming in as Knight of Wands also for you this month and saying, hey, Aquarius, you don't have to deal with this Eight of Swords nonsense. You have to deal with this bullshit. You know what I mean? I feel like this Knight of Wands is a real power booster coming in for you. Yeah, Nine of Swords. Nine of Swords, Nine of Swords. You have two Nine of Swords. This is a month of a lot of anxiety and sleepless nights because I think you're trying to accomplish something that's been difficult to accomplish, which is progressing either out of this relationship, through this relationship, beyond this relationship, or... You know, I truly feel like this is, you know, an Aquarius who's trying to get away from a really effed up situation. And all you want to do is just overcome that fear, Page of Wands. So you, you're working at doing it, and I think you will absolutely do it. But there's a lot of anxiety that you have a lot this month, a lot of worry. Now, Nine of Swords is worry and anxiety, but it is not. It is, it is anxiety by definition anxiety in the sense that, there's nothing on the ground to worry about. Anxiety, we all know what it is. It's a fear. It's an irrational fear. It's not the fear that's based on anything real. Uh, just because you have these fears, it doesn't mean that you're going to fail or it doesn't mean that you're not going to uh, get the objective, right, that you're seeking. It just means that you're scared and that you're having a lot of anxiety. So try and work through that anxiety if you can this month and try not to let it make you believe that you can't make the moves you want to move, make, right? It's just natural that it will come in. You have hanged man over that nine, nine of swords. Part of this anxiety is that for a long time you really haven't made any of the moves that you should have been making for your life, right? But now inspiration has come in, and I think that that inspiration, that waking up, that hanged man energy is exactly what you need to finally get over these fears that have really held you back. Strong, strong reading for an Aquarius out there that is this month, this month finding their strength uh, to get away from, from a toxic situation, from a really toxic situation, from an overbearing partner, King of Swords, who is really just too much, right? And it's time now. You've had enough. Ten of Swords is final, you know, nine, nine, and then Ten of Swords, major completion, you know? We have eight, nine, and ten, so it's definitely been coming all right guys i'm going to leave it at that my lovely aquarius this is your reading for this july this is your love outlook i do hope you enjoyed it if it resonated for you please like subscribe and share that's all i ask for um so that i can keep on thriving and giving you more and more videos but for right now guys i love you i hope that you're staying safe i hope that you're staying healthy and more more importantly most importantly i hope that you are staying kind and loving to each other all right, guys, check me out in my next Aquarius Outlook. But for right now, have a wonderful week, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.